Hey guys, it's uh, Charge 100% Zoom the TBT. It's like we got the Dayton alumni team, the Red Scare, with Joey Gruden and Jeremiah Bonzu. Guys, what's up? What's up, man? Thanks for having us. We're excited to talk some TBT hoops. Yeah, we're, thank, you, thank you for having us, and thank you guys for the exposure you guys bring to TBT. Yeah, no, thanks for taking some time out of your day today, and um, obviously made a huge splash in your first year in the TBT last year uh, with Red Scare, so... Who was the first one to bring this idea to the forefront and say, you know what, we got an awesome uh, alumni base, an awesome fan base. We need to get uh, Dayton into the TBT. Uh, honestly, it started my C.O.R., Joey's original senior year and mine. Um, and Dan Frio, who's part of TBT, he kind of broached the idea towards us. At the time, it just wasn't going to work in terms of putting it together. But then Joey kind of came back last year and was like, Hey man, like we both graduated, we got time, we got players. Uh, let's do it, and and it was great. Yeah. So Joey, um, as far as uh, getting the players together, um, what what was the, the the first kind of couple guys you looked toward that you knew in order to get a successful uh, Dayton alumni team that you had to have on board? Yeah, I think right when we decided we want to play, me and Bon Sue just we got we got a quick list together about fifteen guys, and right from that list, I mean our list was pretty similar. Um, just from the past few years we played and then a few years before us, um, more of the recent guys. And we, we just went from there and we just started using the people we know from who we played with and people that played open gyms with us and got their numbers and just started asking around. Yeah. It's really interesting. Cause like, I mean, Dayton's one of those sort of programs that people really sleep on because Dayton's always a factor. The flyers are, I mean, they always host the first four. It's a great basketball town. And I know you guys are both huge Dayton guys. Can you talk a little bit, because this whole year has been a bit of a mess with the COVID stuff, and Dayton had the best team they've had in a long time. Like, they were a legit championship contender. Like, how disappointing is it to not have to chase that ring this year? Like, I mean, that was a net cutting team. I mean, can you talk about what that meant this season? Uh, well, you know, it wasn't that long because, you know, we won – Back-to-back A-10 championships, so. <laughs> you know. The A-10's no joke. A-10 is a great league. People don't understand that. A-10 basketball is dope as hell. Like, people don't get that. It is. It is. It was the best team since 2017 for sure. Um, I feel so bad for those guys. Uh, kind of I, – I, this is sarcasm for anyone who re- hears this. I do not feel bad for Ryan Mikesell not becoming the all-time winningest player in school history. <laughs> Uh, literally, like, I think right after the day after the season ended, I put me and Joey and him were in group chat, and we just texted him, like, oh, too bad about that one, huh, Rye? Uh, <laughs> if you feel bad for those guys because they worked so hard, and the excitement they brought to the school, the notoriety they brought to the school, you know, great job by Coach Grant and that whole program, and it was just, you, know, you feel bad for those guys. I definitely wanted to see them play well. Uh, I know Joey and I, you know, being both at uh, – you know, him being at Louisville and then me being in Arkansas, we, we felt bad because we didn't get a chance to be in the tournament. But, you know, then you feel a little bit worse for your guys because you just feel for them as a school. Right, right. So let's talk about that Dayton fan base a little bit because um, obviously I think there's something special going on here with the way TBT's lined up this year. The, the fan base was incredible last year in TBT. You guys uh, – earned the honor of hosting championship week, God willing, everything works out. And I'm sure TBT will release their plans for uh, uh, TBT 2020 soon. But this Dayton fan base, tell me about your experience uh, with the TBT. And, and were you, uh, you, you know, they got a great fan base, but they seem like they really came out of the woodwork for your TBT team to support you guys. Yeah. Um, when we first started, we were, we thought we'd get a good, good amount of support you know we thought being the first year team it would it wouldn't be anything crazy um we thought that all the way leading up probably to the first game and then we show up to the arena and we're still like I wonder what's going to be like what's the crowd going to be like and then right when we go back to the locker room and come back out our side is packed and we come out and the fans are going nuts and I think that's me and Bonser realized wow we actually did something pretty cool here and these Dayton fans are really nuts and if you put a Dayton jersey on anybody, I think you'll get fans to come and cheer for you. It's unbelievable the fan support we got just first year and a test run essentially. And it was just it just shows the community and how they rally behind you guys at when you put Dayton on your chest. Yeah, the, the one thing I, I thought fa- found fascinating, I've been at Columbus the last two years. Um the first year obviously uh Carmen's crew was in it, you guys were not there, and then uh, obviously Dayton and Carmen's crew were both there. 
And um, it's only an hour drive up 70, so, so it's not like they're traveling far. But um, the Dayton fans definitely outperformed the Ohio State fans in, in that arena at Capitol Center last year. I think both crowds uh, showed up and, you know, really uh, put on a good show for their teams. But the Dayton fans just went a whole nother level um, from, from a fan perspective. And the one thing I kind of remember from the game against American Unity, which uh, um, we'll talk about in a little more detail shortly, but that one there, I don't know if you guys noticed this sitting on the bench, but I was waiting the whole game for the um, the Karma's Crew fans to start supporting Mid-American Unity and really kind of push the underdog. But it was actually the opposite. I was in a crowd of Ohio State fans everywhere, and they're cheering on Dayton in this uh, dramatic finish. I don't know if you guys noticed that on the bench or not. Jeremiah, did you see that? No, I, I didn't I didn't know that. Um, I was prepared to say a joke of Dayton versus Ohio State, but now i got to thank them. Because you know, I really do appreciate it. But I think what they what people always appreciate is when you play hard, uh, you know, and our guys played really hard. You know, we had seven guys and they were tired, they were hurting. Uh, but in that game, the end of that game was fantastic. You know, I, I think that's the best T V T game of all time, you know. Yeah, speaking of best TV, I mean, so so I know Vince and Char, he's really excited about this. So we actually are going to go ahead and talk about that because I think we're going to let the tape show itself real quick. So let's bring that up real quick. And we're going to go ahead and uh, share it. You can watch us anytime. Yeah. <laughs> and, anytime, anytime. So, and uh, – Vince, you want to lay the scene? What was happening here? I think you were there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. before you played, I, I was there, and, I mean, it was just a tremendous game. Um, Mid-American Unity just took a 72-71 to 71, uh, lead um, at the Elam ending time to uh, push that target score to 80. Uh, we traded a couple baskets, and the next thing you know, it's 74-74. Mid-American Unity comes back and nails a big three. I think it was Drew Joyce, if my memory is serving me correctly, to put up a 77-74 lead. And, and I want to get your guys' take real quick. So 77-74 immediately called a timeout. What do you guys recall from that timeout, the messaging from the coach and the tone of the players uh, on how you're going to finish that game? Yeah, the first thing we all said is we just got to get stops. If we get stops, we can win the game. So – one stop led to one stop, and then we got another stop, and then another stop, and it seems like we got 10 stops in a row. It seemed like we couldn't score a basket, but we just <laughs> did what we said, which was getting stops. And it finally eventually led to a couple baskets, and we ended up winning. But our whole focus was just one stop at a time. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that really showed. Uh, did you have some, Jeremiah? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, that was kind of the benefit of having an experienced coach like Coach Goodwin in our huddle was he – this was to him was like, oh, this is another good game. He's been through it a whole ton of times. So he was really calm. Our guys were extremely calm. Uh, they just, again, talked about just getting stops. We never talked about scoring. We never talked about scoring. We just like, because we're, at the end of the day, we're going to have to get more stops than they had to get at that point to win the game. Uh, but I can't wait to watch this back. Yeah, and that was and that's the beauty of the Elam ending. So I'm sure you guys are fans of the Elam ending, uh, whether you were before this game or not. But you know, the next uh, three possessions, you had two turnovers. Uh, you, you got them still taking threes, and then the game ends up being 78-77. You guys and uh, Jesse Harden got fouled on a three, and so they had a chance to win it. And, and this guy's a shooter. You know, these are local guys. He went to Walsh University, 80% career college free throw shooter. And, and I was telling Joey this before you jumped on. In full disclosure, I was rooting for Mid American Unity. <laughs> they, they're 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 my Acre guys. They're my Can guys. They're they're right where I live, and uh, you know really appreciate the basketball games they played in the TBT. Um, you know, not that I was rooting against you guys because I love love Dayton and all of Ohio. But he went how to do you really feel, Vince? Uh, <laughs> It was intense. Best basketball game I've ever seen. <laughs> but um, he only made one. So it's 78-78. And then uh, I can't remember who went to the line for you guys. And it just shows the pressure. These are professional basketball players. He missed his two free throws. So you're probably like, oh, no. You know, this is, this is going to be tough. But what ended up happening is this, this classic Elam ending thing where, you know, their defense stepped up. I mean, they're playing great defense. Mid-American only needs two points, and they start forcing three-point shots up with, uh, you know, the great defense they were playing. So, um, but at the end of the day, let's take a look at the video and uh, relive one of the greatest moments in TBT history.
Best defender in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Screen. Gets the switch. How do you settle here? You got the switch. No, but here's the thing is, I think people underestimate Kendall Pollard for years. We all watched was the best. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Bam. That's some NBA jam shit. <laughs> and it was uh, Devin Oliver. <laughs> we were out there. <laughs> the place just went crazy. I and, and it, now you guys are seeing it. I can see the smiles on your face already. And you guys have been a part of a lot of big events. Um, you know, being part of the Dayton family for so many years. And so this one game, how did that compare to some of your your other big moments? You must mentioned you won the A-10 championship a couple times. And this had a feel pretty darn close to what you were experiencing there. Well, I can tell you right away, we're, we're used to seeing a K Kendall Pollard and Kyle Davis making big plays late in the game defensively. Um, it's not number one because we had the one uh, NCAA tournament game in Dayton Arena. Um, but this is typical of guys like that, Devin Oliver, those guys making big plays. And it just felt good because it, it honestly felt like you were back at UD Arena. Look like at this. Just like that. Look at him get up. You got to box out there. I mean, the thing about collapsing a defense is, like, everybody's trailing the play, right? So, like, they're not thinking box out thinking get the board and you always lose a guy and then he comes through and that's ball game. Funny because, like, half a second after you made it, you saw everyone look around and, like, oh, my God, did we just win? Like, I feel like people went through, you know, with Elon Musk, were so new to it. And then they realized we won and they all just went after it. It was awesome. <laughs> like, did he call two or three? He called game. He didn't screw around. Uh, that's Devin, too. Devin was great. You know, De Devin was fantastic all weekend. Yeah, now you had a nice core core of guys. I think you have four guys averaging, you know, mid double figures scoring, and uh, um, you know, just just hats off to you guys. I mean, that that was probably like I said. I think TBT's official third best game of uh, the TBT last year. Me being there, I, I'm gonna put it number one because I felt the intensity. The other two games ahead of it were Carmen's Crew in the championship game, or defeating overseas elite and maybe the championship game. I can't remember how they ranked them, but you know, for being a second round game to be the third uh, best game of the TBT last year is uh, pretty impressive. And it's pretty impressive for, for just a first group of guys. So I'm, I'm looking at this roster. You guys have a, a very good roster. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of repeaters, Oliver, the Davises, Pollard, some really talented guys. You got the grad transfer from Louisville. You got McMahon. And you also got a couple of guys who just came out. So you got three guys who just graduated, it looks like. You got a lot of youth, so a lot of energy. So, like, how do you want to play these guys? Like, you got a lot of juice, a lot of youth. Yeah, I mean, young is – Young is good. I mean, it's it's kind of like an accident, not an accident, but it's just it's just who wanted to play at the time and who was excited to play and who was willing to play. Then I mean, they're all great players, obviously. So I mean, we're excited about the youth. I mean, we'll be able to run. Um, and we'll not be able to work out. I mean, hopefully their lungs are a little better than. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't talk about lungs right now. We're all a little nervous about lungs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, the big thing helps us out. The biggest thing I think is if you look at our team, we're versatile. So we're small, but if you look at Ryan, Kendall, Trey, Devin, they all played actually four or five in school, but they're really guards. So we can do kind of both so they can go inside and out. And that's one thing that helped us last year, specifically against Mid-American Unity, because we were getting pounded inside early in that game. And what changed was we were like, well, they can't play with us on the perimeter. They can't run with us. Uh, and also our youth helps in that case. They were an older team than us. We were able, able to run. And actually, the first game, too, we were just running that first game because they were just older. We were a little bit younger. Yep. Uh, and so we think that youth really does play a factor. The key also is experience. And now our guys know how, how the tournament works. Um, like, for example, I think back to that championship game, and me and Kyle Davis have talked about it. We should have let Kyle loose earlier in that game. And towards the end of that game, he started kind of scoring at will creating a uh, havoc if you would you steal that from Shaka Smart. Uh, I but, love Shaka. He's like one of my man crushes. I swear to God, he, can, he is a great coach. You know, he hasn't much like Texas. I love Shaka. Shaka's a great coach, yeah. Uh, you know, so just that, that you know, the youth is going to help us. But our, our roster, people kind of make a big deal about our size a lot of times. And I laugh because, you know, like that's a Dayton theme. You know, it's always all oh, they're too small, they're too small. Okay, bet. We'll see. 
All right. So so let's get ready to break the internet tonight. Um, Scoochie Smith. When are we going to get Scoochie on this team? People will go out of their minds to get Scoochie on this team. So we ready to announce it tonight? No, I got this. So here's what you, the tag you need to put when you post this and everything. I, quote me on this. Everyone in TBT, Dayton fans, whoever that wants to see Scooch, tweet at him every single day. Matt, just do it once. Just do it once. <laughs> Everyone just tweet at him once. Trust me. Apply the pressure. Uh, we're working on Scooch. You know, we know that's what people want to see. But at the same time, you know, if Scooch can't do it, it's fine. We're going to have a team that's ready to play. And whoever shows up and suits up is going to compete. Yeah, I don't really think you have to. We'll have to quote you. We're told you on video. We'll, we'll just let you quote yourself. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> come on, man. Hey, the thing is, he doesn't duck my calls anymore about it, so he's interested. All right, well, there we go. We're that, that new phone, closer. who dis? New phone, who dis? Yeah. But before we move on and talk a little bit about uh, the regional coming up, um, a couple other players I had some interest in. I, I noticed V. Stanford uh, hasn't had a video posted yet or on the website. Uh, is that going to be one of these upcoming announcements? Uh, can you speak to him and his return? Yeah, we're we're talking to V. He's just he's he just had a baby and he's getting married. He's got a lot going right. on this summer, so he's kind of up in the air and. We don't know if he's going to be back in the States yet, but we're hoping to have him back. We would love to have him back if he can do it. Um, we're still just unsure about him the situation right now. We're trying to work on it every day, but he's kind of up in the air. So we're trying to complete a roster with or without him. We'll just be ready to play. Yeah, just, just one last guy. Um, Ryan Bruns, do you guys got him on speed dial? So if you run into a pickle this year? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think uh... – Ryan, we appreciated him playing last year so much. Plus, he was last, like literally the last second. No, like we called him like with 20 minutes left in the clock, and we got him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just had to mention him because uh, uh, you know if if you weren't there watching the game, uh, you didn't realize the impact he had in a couple of those uh, games for you guys. Especially, I, I can't remember if you had uh, um, six or seven guys, uh, but. Obviously, you needed him off the bench, good size off the bench, and put up some really good minutes. So I, I had to give him a mention in here. Uh, Ryan, you know, hope, if we do need him, Ryan, like, please answer the calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talk about the past, about the success. You guys has a first-year program, which is amazing. A lot of TBT guys needed time to get their footing. You guys didn't. You guys came out hot, made a regional final. But the, the past is what you've done. The future is what you got to do. And you're looking at this Columbus region. And it's stacked. You got the defending champs. You just have a great lineup, obviously, every year. And you got some new guys with big things. I, I'm an Illinois grad myself. I went there for grad school. You got the, you got the House of Pain in. You've got the Mackey guys from Purdue. You got Bearcat Jam. You got Mid American Unity who wants that shot, those seven shots back. You got a loaded, loaded region. And you're feisty, but you admit you're small. And that's a Dayton thing. We all know Dayton's small. We know that all the time. It's a Dayton thing. Um, what are you guys going to have to do to repeat your success and take that next step and make to play in Dayton in front of your fans for the championship? What has to happen this year? Just going to do what we did last year, honestly. I mean, we come out together as a team. We're like, it's just some type of energy that Dayton has. It's a, it's an aura. Our fans come out. Um, our players play as hard as they can. We got guys like Kyle Davis. We always play the chip on our shoulder. And I think, I think other teams don't have that. Um, we're just, we take it personal almost. We're, we want to play with the best. People don't look at us the best, so we, we try to prove it to everyone every time we play. So I think that's one big thing that helps us always, anything we do. I don't know what Boxu has to add. Joe hit around the nose. We're not really going to do much different, except we're going to have more guys. You know, I, I don't want to say that we couldn't have – you lose, you lose, you lose. But the reality was we were up at halftime. We were in the game. What happened was this is the third straight day, and our guys came in that morning, and they were all kind of like, oh, man, we're, we're tired, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they had more bodies to throw, and they did a, such a great job subbing, uh, when, especially when they realized we were tired, and so we're going to have more bodies to throw at them, and what Joey said is exactly right. We play with such a chip on our shoulder, so every time I see someone else, like House of Pain, they've really put together a great roster. Um, but every time I see that, I just think like, okay, cool. You're going to have to beat us. <laughs> and that's pretty hard to do from what I've noticed. You know, every day – I got on Dayton team, we had seven guys. And we were five minutes away from beating Buddy Hill in Oklahoma to go to Sweet 16. You know, we also – this is the same group of guys that 
were probably, what, four minutes, Joe, you would say, from winning the a 10 championship our sophomore year. But, again, we ran out of gas. What happens if you give us a full roster? You found out this year with the actual Dayton team. And you get yeah. Roster. They don't lose. No, nah, not really. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think every TVT fan, like I said, we got some other uh, nice-looking alumni teams coming into Columbus, but I, I think every TVT fan wants to see that Dayton Carmen's rematch in uh, uh, Columbus if, if the, you know, the, the plan stays the same. Um, hold on, hold on. Like they, don't, let us, don't let us get to Dayton. <laughs> I'd be really you worried. You shot about, there, aren't you? You're like, you can let us in our own house. We're kicking everyone's ass and we're taking no, their we money. Is that the deal? We get to day one. Yeah, yeah. Carvers didn't get any younger when they announced their team. I thought they were going to possibly go a little bit younger, but they, they look about the same. They may add some some different pieces, but uh, you definitely have, have the youth in the legs versus the experience there and obviously experience in your own right in some NCAA games. So let's talk a little bit about preparation for the TBT. Obviously, um, you know, with the COVID situation, it's um, really tough uh, getting people into gyms right now. I don't know if a lot of the guys still live and work out in the Dayton area in the summer. So just putting your GM hats on and, and thinking that, uh, you know, a couple months away from TBT, how do you guys uh, prepare your game plan and, and your players to participate, not knowing when you'll be able to practice, when you're going to get into a gym? Yeah, I mean, one of the – I don't know about the other teams, but one of the hardest parts is just – Staying on top of our guys and making sure everyone can get transportation and get to the site safe and sound and on time. Um, just because everyone has different schedules and, you know, they're all adults and professionals. They all got different things going on. But once we get them, we like to get there a few days early, um, get acquainted a little bit, get on the court. Uh, we like to do a few practices, just get them up and down. Uh, Coach Goodwin does a good job running that and getting our guys ready. Just a few sets here and there. Um, just really kind of introducing a few things that'll help us out. And then as the games go on, we add a little more um, before, or after the game, we'll talk, um, add a few things, but it's, it's, you know, it's professional basketball. Most of these guys play, uh, it's pretty, we keep it pretty simple and players play. So I mean, it's a player's tournament and I think that's pretty much what it is. That's one thing that we definitely kept in mind last year was there's a player's tournament. You're gonna, the person, the PT team that plays hardest is probably gonna win. So we kept it really simple. Um, luckily for us this year is I, from just kind of seeing on Instagram things like that and talking to a few of the guys, a lot of our guys actually are still have access to a gym and are working out. Specifically, you know, our three guys who are fresh out of college because they're preparing for their professional opportunities right now. So they can't risk getting out of shape. And then the pros, they're going to stay in shape. Uh, Devin Oliver is a professional. Kyle, Kendall, they're going to stay in shape. There's no worries with those guys. Uh, and we have Coach Goodwin. We, we believe that was an advisor. <laughs> is you have a guy who doesn't get flustered and then also commands respect from the guys. So it's when you're getting subbed out, you're not looking at anyone sideways. Oh, you don't know. And, and also what works for Dayton is we all know each other. You know, like all our guys know each other. So there's just a co- – it's automatic you feel a cohesion when you're around them. It isn't even going to be more so this year with uh, the team because – Outside of Ryan, everyone has played multiple, multiple open gyms together, multiple games together, won championships together. Yeah, and that's what's interesting about the, the alumni teams that aren't even blended, the ones that have a core thing. We've, we had Iowa United, which is, by the way, a great team. We've had some other alumni teams on that are blended. And having one where you have one grad transfer, but you're mainly a core of players that has helped. But staying on the COVID thing, like – how does having a con- continuity of Dayton players help you both with like on the court? Because the prep time and the logistics of COVID have made us very different. Like, how do you think your unity is going to help you get past the logistical problems this will face during these times? It's going to help us tremendously. Uh, just look at the fact that one, Dayton, uh, with our Dayton team, you have Ryan and Trey. They live, what, what, what's Ryan, like 30 minutes away from Dayton? Uh, Ryan Mike Sell, that is. You have Trey Landers, who lives in Dayton. So a lot of our guys are close to Ohio. They're going to be able to drive. Uh, none of our guys are going to have to take an airplane, you know, assuming we don't, you know, we have to get V over here. You know, he'd be the one. But everyone else is going to be able to drive, which is going to help us tremendously. And that also is going to be possibly be able to help us get together earlier. If things start opening up and people feel safe, we could get together earlier because we can all drive, you know, and meet up in Columbus, meet up in Dayton. Uh, wherever that may be. 
So that's going to be the biggest thing that's going to help us. You know, I do worry about some teams, you know, if someone says, hey, I, I'm in Florida or I'm in California, I don't feel comfortable, you know, flying over to somewhere, you know, for, uh, for the team. Or in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, 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 our guy in New York good. If he, he's good. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll I'll, 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 I'll drive him there. I'm, I'm going to come <laughs> one of these. I'll, I'll, he can get my car if he has to. <laughs> we'll figure something out for him. All right. Hey, before we close, we, we, we like to always uh, get towards the ending with uh, kind of your, your best memory or, or favorite TBT moment. And, and both of you guys cannot answer the putback dunk that won the game against Mid-American Unity because it, it would hurt my feelings, number one. And uh, that's the obvious one. So um, whichever you guys We don't care about start, your feelings. We don't care about your feelings at all, Church. That, that's true. So if you want to rub it in a little bit more. But, uh, you know, and, and what we found interesting, a lot of the, the guys' favorite moments wasn't necessarily something on the court, some fan interaction or something off the court. So what's uh, some of your guys' favorite moments from the TBT so far? Funny you said that because my first answer instantly was thinking uh, – Pulling up to play Carmen's crew and seeing a line about two miles long for the entrance with all Dayton fans and some Ohio State fans. And then just walking into the gym and seeing our head coach, Coach Grant, and former players like Ryan and Trey were there to support and other guys on the team right now. And guys in the past like Bucky, he, he used to go to all the Dayton Flyer games. He was there on the sideline shaking those guys' hands. And just the overall support and like how big this thing turned into, I think I remember just looking at Bonsu and just saying, man, win or lose, this is awesome. I'm happy we did this. Such a good feeling. You got kids smiling, come up to you saying thank you. Parents coming up to you saying thank you for doing this. So I think just the gratitude and everyone appreciating us do it. I, that just made me feel good as a day flyer and just putting this together in the summer for me. So that I don't copy Joe's, that would definitely be number one as well. We actually had a moment where we were leaving that game, the second game, yeah. And, you know, we took a picture with some fans and you could just see how happy they were. The dad was like, oh, this is their first dating game. <laughs> you know, they have been to the arena. So this was their first dating game. That was great. But my personal favorite, just because I'm a little shit talker, uh, was getting the ch- – was talking shit to Aaron Kraft. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I, I, I forget what I said. But he, they scored, and he turned kind of – when he was running back, he was like, what? And, then, you know, and I actually grew up a huge Aaron Kraft fan personally. Oh, yeah. So that was pretty cool. Like, I even chasing down after the game to say, like, a hey, great game, man. You know, great <laughs> future future med student Aaron Kraft, in fact. He said yep. this is – he's clanging it up. He's getting a th- stethoscope after this. Oh, he better watch out because my sister is actually the the student representative for the Ohio State Medical School oh. on the Ohio State board. I'm he better be nice. Yeah. If, if we play them again and he wins, I mean, he's not going to Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that seems like a pretty good place to end the conversation extortion of an opponent over med school admissions that seems like a pretty good story to end on guys uh we can't let dayton get to dayton because you let these guys get in their own house for the finals i think they're taking the whole damn thing right yes sir we know Go. it's just like the old boston garden we know where the where the dents in the floor are where the ball won't bounce back up all that stuff yeah. All right, guys, go get that bag. Joey and Jeremiah, thanks for your time tonight. We really liked having you on. 